Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial on how to create a survival game with Ultimate Survival. Before we start, just want to let you know that once I hit 500 subs, I'll have a competition to give away some assets. There have been some really great publishers from the asset store who have been generous enough to give me some license keys, so I'll be able to run a few competitions. And to enter the competition, all you need to be is a subscriber. And, well, be yourself. So click on that big juicy subscribe button and let's get started on today's tutorial. And in today's video, we're going to be adding ammo to our guns. That's right, if you look at the bottom of the screen, you can see a times 2 If I fire, that goes down. And now if I try to fire again, all I get is that ominous click. So to reload, I'm just going to drag my ammo. And if I fire one bullet and I reload, I'm just going to reload one shell. So going to be a lot of fun. We're going to be doing some code, we're going to be playing about and I'll see you guys in a second as I pop into Unity. Okay, here we are in our scene. I'm going to go up to Tools, Ultimate Survival and straight into Item Management. Okay, so in Item Management I'm going to go to Property Editor. We're going to create three new property types. So we're going to create three ints. One of them is going to be called Ammo and I'm going to just drag him up here Oops, underneath that one, make it nice and tidy I'm going to put this one up there, I'm going to call this one ammo capacity you see ammo is an int, ammo capacity is an int and this one is going to be a ball and I'm going to call this one is ammo we're going to use this one for adding on to our ammo types so if I go back into the item editor and I choose on ammunition and shell. I'm now going to add ammo type. Call this one shell because it's a shell. And I'm going to put is ammo true. Now I could do the same for the others, but I'm just going to leave it on the shotgun at the moment. Now, if I go to gun and I go to shotgun. Let's do the same kind of thing. I'm going to go to ammo and I want to start it always with two rounds in the gun, which is a gift. Gift of two bullets. And I'm going to put capacity so the most that my shotgun can have is two rounds. Now, if I was, I could have this to be 12, to 20, to 48. You get my, you get the drift, but it's just going to be two. Nice, simple. Two, uh, nice simple shotgun. Okay, that's all we have to do here. Done and dusted. So now let's find our GUI and slot template. Click on 2D and let's expand him. Expand him again. Now you see this stack display. I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to call it ammo display and change it from being in the bottom right to be top left and if I start typing you can see that it is up there but it's not really the best position is it so I'm not sure why it's offset like that either so let's change position down and I'm gonna make this 60 by 60 so if I had X1, there you go, that looks right. Let's put that back to empty. So now we've got our stack display, ammo display, we need to start doing some code to make use of this. Right, I'm in my favourite editor and I'm editing the FP weapon base. And you can see here, we're also going to be editing the FP hit scan and the slot files at the moment. But first, FP weapon base is where we're at. So let's scroll down until we find these commented out bits of code. So I'm replacing this top one with my own variables that I'll be declaring. I'm declaring here m underscore ammo property, capacity and amount and they're going to be protected variables we're going to use them in a moment. Okay so let's we're going to use this one a little bit. Um, I'm just going to add a little bit of error handling on there. Okay so here we go. So this first one is grabbing the property value ammo type 
first of all, we're just making sure that it exists and it has the property. So likewise, ammo capacity. And the last one is ammo. And that's it for this script. We don't have to come back to FP Weapon Base. Once we've edited these three variables, we're done. So let's save that and pop into FP HitScan. So in this file, we want to do two things. We want to start reducing the ammo when we fire, but we also want to get some sound. So first things first, let's add some variables to grab some sound. Let's go down past all this stuff and see here we've got audio source and we've got the fire audio. It looks like a good place to add in our own script. So let's just add that in. And with the magic of pause and unpause, I've pasted in a load of code. Actually, all I did was I copied this and I pasted it and I changed fire audio to be empty fire audio. I did it again for reload audio. And because these are private, I want to use this reload audio later. I made a public variable, and I get a similar name, and I want to use the audio source from up here later. So I made a public and I've called it audio source without the underscore. And these are hidden, so you don't see this in the inspector. Let's go down to the shoot. Here it is, void shoot. And before all of this fancy stuff happens, we want to put an if statement in and a variable. Through the magic of ports again, I've created here a bar for ammo, and that's m underscore ammo mount. That's my private one from at the top. And you've got to put dot int. I'm saying here if my ammo, which is my integer current, so the current value of my integer is greater than zero, then we can start doing stuff. Let's grab all this and indent it out, make it look a bit nicer. And here we go. Magic of pause and unpause again. We're going to add a bit of code. Basically, here we say ammo, the current ammo, minus minus, so drop it down by one. And now we're going to set the value so we go. Remember, it was a protected before. So m underscore ammo amount, set a value, and it's a integer. And then we've got to put this value. So we've got ammo. This now got how much ammo there is. You see how it's got ammo and not ammo dot current. That's because you've got here type.int. Now, if you don't have it greater than zero, which means that it's zero, or possibly negative, but for our game, it's only ever going to be zero, we've got here empty fire audio dot play, and that's our click noise that we'll have. Okay, let's go to the top of our page, and you remember these two public variables that we made and these two private well we're going to go down into the start and we're going to get these publics to grab the values from these privates hmm sounds nice so go down to start and I'm just going to do some magic and paste this so, alright here we go we've got our private variable here we're making sure that it's not null and if it's not null we'll make the public have the value from the private and pretty much the same thing with making sure that our audio source is set it exists on our private and we're going to say our public is going to grab the value from the private okay click save I'm in the slot file and if we go down we'll find where are you hiding this stack displayer so let's do it together let's copy them and paste it in and change stack displayer to be ammo displayer. Right, we want to find a few of these, so let's find them. Here's the next one over here. Just grab that and copy them there and change that again to ammo displayer. And you're saying it's enabled when it has the item, and we want it to be when it actually has property ammo. Right, job's good. Save that. Let's find another one. Where's the next one hiding? Find. Here we go. So, if it's enabled, then we're going to do something. So, just like that one, we're going to say. Um, we're not only going to say if it's enabled, but I'm just going to say if it even has anything in there. Just an extra bit of error handling. So we're going to say ammo. 
there you go ammo displayer is there and it has it's enabled then we want the text and it's going to be like this one but instead of being has property we're going to say get oh here we go we can just grab this one to get property value and it's not a voice it's an int and it's current and actually while we're adding in some error handling let's put one in here so let's say if m ammo displayer make sure they actually is there we avoid having any backwards compatibility because we've added in a new value all the slots that currently exist don't actually have this included so we we'll get a load of errors that looks nice there we've got here the format the format we'll be using is an x and then the value and then it grabs this as its value and let's find the last one we've got here stack display here so similar thing we're going to have template dot ammo display this time because it's got a template in front of it and exactly the same as that one I'll get it above so we just copied it and changed it for has property ammo and the template like we had above is get property value ammo in and current but unlike before now we use for item which is what I had here for item okay so just before we move on let's have a quick recap of what we've changed in this slot file go back up to the top where we've got all of our variables you can see here we've got our serialized field for our text type and it was for our ammo displayer so let's put some comments in there to make it a little bit nicer to read and this was our ammo displayer to show how much ammo that weapon has and let's go into the next one we changed and that was down here where we copied the existing stack displayer it's dot enabled which basically says that if um, this is enabled uh, when it has the item and that object has the property ammo and again let's add a little bit more commenting in here so we make sure that error handling make sure m ammo displayer variable has a value and that's to make sure that when we've got our slots being used throughout the entire game because you use the same slot template on many different things you use it on the inventory you use it in the crafting you use it in the hotbar and unless you actually set an ammo displayer value you're gonna get some errors being kicked up when we play our game so this first of all ammo, um, ammo displayer make sure that there is a value in there and only if there's a value in there then we check that it's enabled when it has an item and the kind of item has the property ammo so further down again we've got a similar thing unlike the stack display where we say it's enabled we also run another check to make sure that it has a value and it's enabled again so we don't have to worry about going back and updating every single one so I'm just going to grab that and put it in there and here you've got ammo displayer text and the text that you're going to show is going to be X and then the number and that number is after this comma here tells me what value you're going to put in there we're going to put in the value from the ammo and it won't work unless you tell it that it's an integer and it's the current value of this integer in here and then it goes alright I'll grab the number and I'll stick it in otherwise you're just going to get weird errors saying that it can't read it it can't turn it into an int when you like confused because you know it already is an int and then further down again we grabbed these and we copied it because these are for our templates let's just copy what they're doing and we added in the ammo displayer and again just going to add in a little comment here that we had before so much like we had above it's just duplicated and now it's for the template and instead of current item it's the four item that you see in here and that was it I don't think we had anything else did we let's just do another search All right so in here grab the stack display enabled paste it in 
and change that to ammo displayer and now don't forget that because we don't want to be going back and editing every single one of our slots that use the slot template we need to put our if there is actually a value in this ammo displayer then we set the ammo displayer enabled to force back inside unity I'm going to go to my inventory controller that's under my mail player make sure he's got a shotgun and he has now I need to find our in-game GUI slot template and where is our script that we've added here we go you can see the ammo displayer drag in our ammo displayer and if we go down to the HUD and the hotbar when we click apply now all of them will actually have our changes now let's go up to our shotgun and you see where are we now ah, here you go we've got two new things I've added empty fire audio and reload audio so let's go to empty fire and increase that to a one we're gonna need to get an audio clip here and lucky for me I've got one that I downloaded so if I go here and I type in clip this is my clip noise and I want to make it a little bit louder so I'm going to make it 4 to 4.5 the range and let's go inside click play let's see what's going to happen hey bottom of the screen it's got times 2 x2 if I fire it's x1 if I fire again x0 and if I now get that click brilliant okay guys and this is a good place to pause it for now so I'm just going to upload this video as part one and part two we're going to start doing the tutorial for adding the ammo and also the animations so for now remember guys if you like it click it and I'll see you in a few moments if you want to see more on the ultimate survival series click on the links on the left side of your screen and if you like these videos and you want to see more of them please click subscribe it's in that big button that's down below and there's next to it there's a little magic bell and when you click that bell it tells you when there's a new video out so cheers thanks for all the support